hey youtube fam welcome back to my channel it's life with ashi so i just kind of want to do a little vlog out to my mothers i just want to talk to y'all i want y'all to talk to me because we all need some uplifting we all need some support we all need a shoulder we all need an ear we need it all and then some so um today i just want to talk i just want to vent to y'all just a little bit not nothing too crazy nothing too bad but just like the whole sense of trying to get your life back after becoming a mother you know what i mean like yes you have a baby yes you carried a baby for nine months yes you knew what you were getting yourself into but i don't think anybody talks about the life after motherhood like you hear about the teething stage the potty training the terrible tools like not sleeping at night you you hear all of that but you they don't talk about the battle that you fight yourself with like the battle internally that you you go with go through after having a baby and it is no limit it is no length of time how long you go through it everybody is different everybody copes differently everybody has a different support system and a patience level and so excuse me um i just want to talk about that i me myself i my pregnancy was it was planned in a sense i wanted a baby um, it was taking me a while to have a baby and uh, I went through a few losses before I was able to get my rainbow diva that I have now. But um, I think that the difference is when you have like somebody in your corner and somebody there with you somebody to you know listen to you somebody to go through what you're going through almost you know because men you know they have their own symptoms they go through they have their own reactions or whatever uh that they get while you're pregnant so i just feel like my entire pregnancy from the point of me finding out i found out i was pregnant um in April of 2019 and only a month after I found out I was pregnant I found out that I had a DVT which is a deep vein thrombosis which is aka a blood clot in my leg and um I just found it so weird because I've been dealing with the same pain for years like young like high school I've been dealing with the same pain like when we when we were in gym class i couldn't run the laps that they were requesting me to run i couldn't do uh what's those things called the sprints the i can't i can't think but like when a bell ding you run and you come back and you're running i couldn't do them so all this time um people were thinking that i was making up excuses of why i couldn't run and i was just being lazy and to be honest i didn't want to do it but that's not the reason why so um once i found out that i had the dvt uh the blood clot in my leg they automatically put me on blood thinner um and so being on blood thinners is just a pill every day but being on blood thinners while pregnant is a totally different story I had to have injections. I had to inject myself twice a day. Okay. That was strike number one for me. Um, I'm not afraid of needles. I'm not afraid of shots. Um, I have 10 tattoos uh, and I get my blood drawn every so often. Like I'm not afraid of needles basically. But to know that I have to do this two times a day i was just like huh you know like I, I don't i ain't ready for all of that so 
dealing with that and then being a high risk pregnancy because that comes with it. So I was automatically taken out of work. I couldn't do the job that I was doing and be pregnant at the same time. So I went on maternity leave at only four months. And so um, things, you know, got crazy trying to keep up with bills, trying to maintain a vehicle, trying to, you know, keep food in the house, blah, blah, blah. And so that whole pregnancy, as much as I tried to keep my head above water and remain, you know, positive and stress-free because I am carrying a baby, I was trying to, you know, just relax and, you know, keep it sane. It stressed me out that pregnancy stressed me out so bad like two different doctors two times a week my entire pregnancy and um at the towards the end of my pregnancy I would say about seven months or so they were telling me that my baby wasn't growing as much as she should so that was another scare for me because I'm like, okay, she's not growing, so so now what? And the reason why she wasn't growing is because the injections that I had to take from my blood thinners were blocking my placenta, basically. Like, like they take food, they stop the flow, basically, of, you know, the food getting to the baby. So I was eating twice, three times as much just trying to gulge myself in as much as I could and I threw up my entire pregnancy but I'm gonna tell you one thing I threw up my entire pregnancy but like as soon as I ate something and I felt that I had to go throw up I went and throw up and I came right back and I ate <laughs> like it did not stop me from eating at all like I was eating everything okay going out to dinner all the time me and my sister were actually pregnant at the same time coincidentally and so um we was always out to eat olive garden is my favorite restaurant so we was always out to eat always eating something always grabbing something on the way somewhere like we we ate all the time so um once they told me that she was a little bit on the smaller side i'm like okay so what are we going to do so um after that they were like okay we're just gonna keep track of it blah 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 and by the time I got to a month before I was due, um, they were like, we're just gonna have to um, induce you. So I had to get induced. I had my schedule, so my baby um, was scheduled to be induced three weeks early than what she was supposed to be. So, um, in my head, I'm like, okay, is she going to be healthy? Is she fully developed? Is she able to come out and stand on her own? All of the stuff is going through my mind because I've already had previous losses. So, um, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm stressing. I remember just crying and crying and crying. I would lock myself in the bathroom and just cry, cry, cry because I'm like, Lord, I did not pray and fight for this baby just to have her taken from me. Like, I, I, that's, not, that's not what we're doing. So, um, I pray and I pray and I pray and the day that I went to the hospital to, um, get induced, I was supposed to get induced the same day and they talked me into having a C-section because my placenta was already under so much stress from the medicine that I was on. And so they were just like, just, you're gonna be in labor for a very, very, very long time if you go this route. So they told me to have a C-section to uh, basically just get it over with, honestly. And he told me that if I decided to go the natural route, which is pushing, um, and something happened and I had to have an emergency C-section, my boyfriend wouldn't be able to you know be there to see his daughter being born and so i didn't want to take that from him i didn't want to take that risk period so i just decided to go ahead and do the c-section um so i had the c-section the next morning um and everything went smooth the medicine the needle that they put in my back 
it did hurt a little bit but it wasn't nothing too crazy like i said i'm good with needles um i don't really feel pain from them or anything like that um so i ended up having my baby the next morning um and i didn't really feel much with the c-section obviously because you're under medication i did feel pressure but i just knew uh i can hear the doctor saying like she's here and the only thing that I wanted to do was hear her cry. I'm like, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. So I told my boyfriend, I'm like, look, I like, you know, I look at her. I don't hear anything. So he's like, she fine, she fine, babe, she fine, she fine. And then I finally heard the cry. And then I could hear them saying, come on, you can take pictures if you want. And I'm like, oh, I just started crying, crying, crying. And I'm laying on the table. So like the tears are going like to my ears. I'm like, please wipe, please wipe. So, um that was just like a scary moment for me and I never thought that you I mean you see all these people saying you know I never seen love like this or I never had love like this or like having a baby is just a life changing thing like it's so different it's so weird like it's just like a, a feeling that is out of this world, honestly. Like, I just was looking at her in the bassinet, and I'm just like, oh my God. Like, I did this? I had this? This is mine? This came from me? This is what I was carrying? You know what I mean? And I just felt so in love. Like, it's just different. It's just, I can't even explain it. I was just like, oh my God. Like, nobody nobody can tell me anything right now <laughs> like this is my baby that's it and she did not have to go into the NICU she did not need any tubes no incubation no nothing my girl came out strong I, man when I tell y'all I thank God I thank God because he knew I was praying and I was praying and I was crying and I was like please 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 so um, with that being said, it's just like we go through so much being pregnant and carrying a baby and then having a baby and then you think like after delivering, it's all over and it's not, it's not, it's like one stage is over and now you convert into the next stage and so after having my baby, I was mean. I don't know why. To this day, I don't know why. But when I say I was mean, I was mean. Like, I had an attitude out of this world. I was like, ugh. Like, don't touch her. Don't look at her. What are you doing? Why are you holding her like that? Like, I was on 10, you know? And so, um eventually it kind of faded away a little bit and I was more open to visitors and letting her go over my mom's more and uh I wasn't ready for the night away like her spending the night away or anything yet I wasn't ready for that but I did ease up eventually and so my postpartum I feel like me being angry was Part of my postpartum but I didn't realize it at that point but I realized it um about seven months down the line after I had her um I just was like so drained so tired so emotional I was just like I don't know what's wrong with me I can't figure it out I don't understand why I feel like this it was just days where I was waking up and I just was like, I don't wanna be here no more. I don't wanna do this. This is too much. I just wanna pack up and run away. Like, I just, what is this? What life is this? Like, how did it get like this? That's what was going through my head. And I was there, I can't even tell y'all how long I was there, honestly. I was there for, I'm gonna say at least, two to three months I was there just like in this dark tiny 
rabbit hole. Like, I just, everything was just aggravating me, irritating me. It was so bad. Me and my boyfriend was not talking, like, living in the same house, walking past each other, not talking. That's how bad it was. Like, it was just so, it was terrible. Like, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But I realize now that that was my, my postpartum depression. Um, and it took a lot to get out of that. I ended up talking to a counselor or a therapist. I know it's a difference between them, but I ended up talking to someone and they helped me get to like the root of it, I guess, and deal with it in a different light. And so that helped me a lot. But overall, I just don't think that people get the stuff that mothers go through. I just, I don't get why it's not talked about enough. I don't get why it's kind of pushed under the rug or not brought to the light. I don't get why it's overlooked in a sense because it's, it's big. It's big. Like, you know, you... You carry a baby, you do the few hours of labor, but after that, it's a whole new battle that you have to face. And just getting back to loving yourself and liking yourself and thinking that, you know, you're beautiful and trying to feel beautiful, trying to take a picture again. Oh, Lord. Mmm. I still struggle with taking pictures. I'm trying to figure out which side. It's a good side. How can I tuck my stomach in? How can I, you know? It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and I just feel like women should be there for women. Women should help women with the situations that they know are hard to handle alone. And so um, I'm here if anybody wants to talk. You can comment down below what you may be facing. If you face anything that I faced or if you agree with anything that I said, um, I have no problem making more videos when it comes down to motherhood and dealing with it and um, advice or tips. I just, I really had to pray. I really had to uh let some of my bad thoughts go I really had to just stay anchored and this is the baby that I trained for this is the baby that I got for and so if I'm not here for my baby then what did I have her for you know what I mean like I really had to remember why I started out with this in the beginning and that was to have the beautiful little girl that I have now she drives me crazy but I wouldn't change it for the world I would do it all over again when I say <laughs> when I say I would do it all over again I mean I would do the process that I did already again not another baby that's far 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 down the line <laughs> so um but yeah I love I love my princess I she is definitely a, a dream come true but um you still you still struggle day to day with finding yourself and I actually just put her in daycare um at the beginning of this month so when I put her in daycare, it was more so that I can handle the stuff that I need to do and um, not have to drag her along with me. And plus, she needs to be in daycare to socialize with kids. So, you know, she she is very good with kids. She's not a fighter. She's not shy. She, she loves kids. Like, come on, come on here. Like, she shares her toys, everything, even though she's only... Um, the only child she's she's very kind-hearted and caring and sharing and all of that so I put her in daycare for the benefit of both of us 
and um as much as it hurt and as much as i had to detach myself it's probably the best thing that i could have ever did like me putting her in daycare helped me get myself back like i have time to get myself back i have time to think and process and i have time to get up and get myself pretty i have time to do what i want to do i have time to get up and get myself pretty i have time to you know take a couple pictures if i want to i have time to lay in the bed and feel like a grump if i want to and um i think that that made a big impact on both of our lives like now she goes to daycare so i'm missing her when she's at daycare so our love is is there and she's coming home like mommy mommy here like bringing me pictures that she fainted and stuff like that so it's it's definitely a plus for both of us um i had to tell the daycare lady I said, you know, I cry, obviously, because I had to let her go. And I'm letting her become her own person. And I'm trusting somebody to take care of her the way that they would take care of their own or the way, you know, they should. And so it's a much more than just that. It's just like me reclaiming my life again. Like me finding out who I am or who I used to be or like the new person that I am now like it's just so much more than just me sending her to daycare so I can have a day to myself like that's not that's not what it is so um I just wanted to make this video basically just to reach out to all my mothers or mothers to be um that we all need to be here for each other we all need to be here to, for each other. We all need to support each other. We all need to uplift each other. I'm going to get my words single. Um, and we all need to uh, be more of a woman empowerment movement. Um, I think that it goes a long way. I think that we need it now more than ever. Because times have changed. People have changed. It's crazy out here in this world now so um i definitely am with building up women and mothers um so if you like this this video that i did just like comment down below subscribe to my channel and i will be back with more videos of course see y'all later bye